Hey guys, the only one who says here with a video review of the Samsung NT10 netbook. This review is going to be in two parts. This first video is going to concentrate on the hardware and then in the second video I'm going to take you um, on a quick tour of the, uh, the software um, including uh, quite a lot of information about Windows 7 uh, because I uh, wiped XP and put Windows 7 on my netbook. So just to give you a bit of background, the NC10 was Samsung's first netbook. It, they released it in October 2008 uh, so that makes it just under a year old and uh, according to Samsung it sold over a million copies which isn't surprising seeing as pretty much every tech outlet has had only good things to say about it. Um, it it's firmly in the second generation of netbooks. The first generation um, typically had Linux installs um, and like the EPC had, had smaller screens, sort of 7 inch size and uh, slightly shorter battery life between 3 and 4 hours. Um, third generation, which are the newer ones like the NC120, um, typically have better specs. Um, they usually have slightly better processors and uh, built-in things like built-in 3G. Um, but the NC10, yeah, like I said, it's definitely a second generation netbook. Uh, it's got a bigger screen uh, than the first generations. The battery life's a lot better, um, and the the processors are usually uh, a lot better. So the specs of this one, it's uh, sort of pretty standard second generation netbook spec. It's got an Intel Atom N270 processor running at 1.6 gigahertz. Uh, it comes to standard with one gig of RAM, but I've upgraded it to two because I'm running Windows 7. Uh, I'll talk about that slightly later on. Uh, it has the Intel Mobility 945 chipset with 950 GMA graphics, uh, integrated B slash G Wi Fi, gigabit F Ethernet. Uh, and a 160 gigabyte 5400 RPM hard drive uh, and Bluetooth as well. So just to give you a quick tour of the exterior, um, if you can see the top here, um, I've got the black model, there's a, there's a white model and there's a blue model uh, been released as well. The black one, the top, uh, has this glossy finish which you might be able to see my picture reflected in the top. Uh, which means it looks very stylish, but it's also somewhat something of a fingerprint magnet. You can probably see the few <laughs> scattered around there. Um, and it's got the Samsung logo uh, on the top uh, in um, sort of faux aluminium, which looks quite nice. Um, so if we flip it over, this is the bottom, obviously. Um, this slot here is where the um, memory stick sits. Uh, and like I said, I've upgraded it to two gigs of RAM, um, and you just unscrew that one screw, flip the flip the um, the little latch open, and, and stick the stick in. It's a very easy upgrade, and I definitely recommend it. Uh, not just if you're installing Windows 7, but also it makes Windows XP a lot faster. Uh, one thing to note about the screw is that it's made of a very poor quality metal, so if you don't have a decent screwdriver with quite a sharp point, you're going to strip the screw very quickly, which obviously you don't want to do because that will make access to the panel very difficult in, in if you want to do any future upgrades or, or downgrades. Here, if we just take the lock off, we have the, he says, putting the lock on, <laughs> we have the 6-cell uh, battery. Um, it fits in fairly nicely, fairly snug fit. It doesn't poke out too, too far, which is always good. Um, it's, it has a quoted battery life of about 8 hours, but I think that's a tad optimistic. I've found with sort of regular testing uh, the, the backlight at mid brightness and uh, with Wi-Fi on, it lasts between four and a half and five and a half hours, which is excellent, uh, especially for, for, for a netbook this size and given the amount of power it does actually have. Um, okay, so the left side, if you can see that, we've got a power jack uh, socket for, for the power adapter, obviously, gigabit Ethernet port, which is always good, two USB ports on the front. If we go to the other side, we have headphone, microphone jack, fairly standard stuff, another USB port bringing the total to three, which is pretty good for a small unit, and um, a VGA output, Kensington lock, and power switch, which has a nice little blue light-up effect, which is kind of cool. Um, on the front, we have seven status indicator LEDs. We've got uh, that one is, let me just have a look, that's caps, no, that's num lock, caps lock, scroll lock, uh, that's hard drive activity, uh, Wi-Fi, charging LED, this goes orange when you're charging and green when it's fully charged and you've got your power um, LED there as well. Just along here you have the SD card slot. Uh, one annoying thing about this which I'll just demonstrate if I find an SD card 
is um, it's SDHC compatible, so you can use up to probably 32 gigs worth of SD card storage. Um, and seeing as the the hard drive is 160 gig, it's, it's big. It's not it's not huge. So if you want to upgrade it to sort of any flash storage space, you can. But one bad thing is that it does poke out slightly. Uh, if you can, if I have it like that, yeah, there we go. You can see it pokes out a bit. It doesn't sit flush with the edge, which is slightly annoying and could be a bit of an issue if you know you're carrying it along and it might catch on the edge of something and snap off. Obviously, you don't want that to happen. Overall build quality is absolutely fantastic. It's very solid, very well put together. Um, fairly, it, it's 1.33 kilograms. It's fairly chunky, fairly heavy, but well, I say fairly heavy. It's not really that heavy. It just feels very well built, very solid. So certainly. Okay, so that was the exterior. Now I'm going to show you what it's like opened up. Um, so if we just grab the screen, open it up. The screen hinge. It's a bit weak, it, there's quite a lot of travel in it, um, it could do to be slightly firmer, a bit more frictiony, I suppose, that's probably just personal preference. But it does, like, like the rest of the netbook, it feels very solid. Uh, the screen goes back about that far, it doesn't go back any further, although there's no reason why you would want it to go back any further, to be honest. Uh, so that's good. Um, so if we just go from top down, you've got your webcam here, digital live cam which uh, probably is better somehow, probably not. Um, 1.3 megapixels, standard stuff. The screen, the screen's very interesting. Um, it's, well, it's a, it's a standard second gen netbook screen, 10.2 inches, 1024 by 600 uh, res, it's widescreen. Um, it's interesting because of the quality actually of the screen, it's probably one of the best screens I've seen on a netbook um, for, for a very long time. Um, certainly one of the, certainly probably the best actually out of the second generation netbook screens. Uh, it's very sharp, uh, the contrast levels are good, viewing angles are very good both from the sides and from uh, horizontal and vertical viewing angles. Um, it has an LED backlight which is another really good feature uh, because CCFLs uh, traditionally are slightly more uneven in their backlighting and they also drain more battery power whereas LEDs are more energy efficient. Um, you can control the backlight manually or you can have it set to automatic in the BIOS. I'd recommend changing it to manual because then you can use the function keys and the up and down arrows to, to change it. There's eight levels of brightness uh, from sort of um, fairly dark, not being able to see it very much, to retina scorching bright. Um, there's, I, so as there's eight, I'd probably recommend four or five is pretty standard um, and that's a good balance between being able to see it and uh, saving on power. Um, it's the resolution is quite it's it's standard for the for the for the screen size and it's certainly appropriate for the screen size. You definitely don't want something like on the VOP where it's an eight inch screen and sixteen hundred horizontal res, which is just awfully sharp, and you get so much eye strain from just even staring at the tiniest text. This is very appropriate for the screen size, and the ten twenty four horizontal resolution means you can browse web. Uh, web pages without there being massive scroll bars everywhere, which was a common criticism of the first generation netbooks like the EPC, because they had horizontal resolutions of about 800, which meant there were probably scroll bars on some websites. So the screen is very good, the screen gets my thumbs up 100%. Uh, and then the keyboard is also comparably good, it's 93% of a full um, laptop size keyboard, uh, and it's between the centre of each key. Uh, this, sorry, the centre of one key to the centre of the adjacent key is 1.77 centimetres, uh, which is known as the key pitch, I think, um, which is good. Uh, it's the actions, the actions good. Um, certainly not spongy or particularly slack. You've got some good solid tactile feedback, uh, and it's very easy to get used to, um, even if you're not really used to touch typing or if you're used to a much larger keyboard with about 15-20 minutes of practice, you'll be touch typing in no time. Um, good thing about the UK model, uh, which you don't get on the US model, is that the enter key is full size. Uh, it's one of my pet hates on notebooks when the enter key is half size, because um, it's just really annoying if you're used to using your little finger to get the little edge, and oh, all of a sudden, oh, I've hit shift again. So that's useful. Um, it might not be, it's probably not that much of an issue for some people, but for me, that was a very big plus. Um, just underneath there you've got the built-in microphone, which is loud actually, it's very sensitive, it's a good microphone. So you can use it like this instead of talking like I'm talking now. Obviously I'm doing the camera mic, but if you're recording something on the webcam, you can just speak normally and the, and the built-in mic will pick you up. 
um, pretty well. Obviously, if you're doing something